This is Don Bernanke and today I'm going over a guide to stop the worst leg conditions. We're talking about swelling, venous insufficiency, phlebolymphedema, lipodermatosclerosis, and lymphedema. These are the worst end stage disorders that happen. Do you have browny, discolored, scaly skin? Do you have cracked, itchy, painful, bleeding skin? We're gonna go over all these, including spider veins, varicose veins, and blood clots. We're gonna go over all these, and I'm gonna tie it all together at the very end with the best tips and tricks that I apply to my patients, because I see this stuff thousands of times, and we're gonna go over what's practical and what works starting now. It's different to get diagnosed in person than in a video. If you think you have a blood clot or lymphedema or an infection or cellulitis, make sure you get checked out in person. If you're in Michigan, come see me. I'd love to help you take care of this stuff. In the context of venous insufficiency, phlebolymphedema, lipodermatosclerosis, and lymphedema, swelling occurs because circulation is impaired and fluid builds up in the affected areas. On the other hand, if the blood flow is not getting down to your feet and you have aching, throbbing, cold feet, that's arterial sclerosis. Poor blood flow to the legs. This can overlap with the other disorders that I just mentioned. I know it's a mouthful, but basically if you have nighttime pain, if you can't walk very far without pain, if you have red hot swollen legs on one side but not the other, this could be a blood clot, this could be a blockage in the form of arterial sclerosis. We have a ton of videos. Check out the videos below, but I go over the best supplements, the best home remedies, compression socks, treatments, when to do everything. I'm not gonna get into arterial sclerosis in this video. What we're talking about is the blood flow problems that have a hard time coming up. That's all the ones I mentioned. Specifically, let's start with venous insufficiency. This refers to the compromised function of the veins, particularly the valves. This can show itself as varicose veins or even just a lot of swelling where it's purple and congested. Valves basically open when you're pumping your muscles and close when your heart's not pumping so it doesn't go back. But if the valves break and open in, then the blood just jostles back and forth and then eventually swells. This leads to discoloration, discomfort. Things that can help are things like compression socks to basically squeeze it and get it going. People who are more active and move more, less body weight. But essentially this can cause spider veins and varicose veins. A broken valve is essentially a spider vein and varicose vein. Hey, I have guides on spider veins, varicose veins, venous insufficiency, all those down below. Click on that Lebo lymphedema. Flebo lymphedema is a condition that combines elements of venous insufficiency and lymphedema. The veins cause venous insufficiency, but lymphedema occurs when your lymphatic system is impaired as well. Now this can happen due to infection, lots of other issues. Your lymph vessels essentially take out the fluid around your cells and take up bigger things like proteins. When your lymph channels are blocked, that's when protein can deposit in your skin. That's when you get thicker, crustier, scalier skin. If you ever see people with swollen legs that have a trark like effect, that's essentially a lymphedema problem. If it's just swollen and congested, but your skin's still nice, that's more of a venous problem, but you can have both. And in fact, usually it's both. A different one is called lipodermatosclerosis. Lipodermatosclerosis is characterized by your skin now having inflammation, fibrosis, which means hard scaling and hardening of the skin and underlying tissues. So this is even worse. Usually in the legs, this is a later stage. This happens with long-standing venous insufficiency and chronic inflammation. Lipodermatosclerosis can cause discomfort in the leg, cause swelling, skin texture can change. And in fact, there's a condition when your skin is brown and scaly, this is hemosiderin deposits. So these are iron deposits in your skin when you're congested and swollen for a long time, this builds up inside your skin. On the other hand, now you have lymphedema. If you have impaired lymphatic drainage, this results in the accumulation of lymph fluid. Primarily, lymphedema can be congenital. It can be secondary due to damage, such as radiation therapy, fungal infections, bacterial infections. 
persistent swelling, heaviness, decreased flexibility, things like diabetes, that's lymphedema. I have a guide that goes all the way over lymphedema, how to take care of it, but don't worry, we're gonna go over all these at the end because they all have pretty similar treatments. But essentially, they're spider veins. Spider veins and varicose veins we talked about, that's when the valves break, but essentially they can expand and you can develop things like blood clots at this point. They are usually harmless, the varicose veins, but a blood clot can develop on top of these. This can lead to an issue. So a blood clot can become an emergency. Blood clots can develop on the way down in your arteries, but that's more a narrowing called arteriosclerosis. But the blood clot we're talking about in the veins is an actual ball of thrombin. So essentially this can shoot up into your lungs and plug your lungs. This is where it gets dangerous. A venous thrombosis or a deep vein thrombosis is on the way back to the heart and it can plug your lungs. So this is common with ladies going through pregnancy, smokers, people with prior blood clots. This is a risk for lodging in your lungs. This has about a 50% chance of death when this happens. So this is a serious, serious problem. So if you think you have a blood clot, you can come see us. We have clinics in Michigan where we can do a Doppler and essentially check if your veins compress or not, if there's a clot in there. So very important. We have techs on standby that can help out with that. Another condition is called papillomatosis. So when you have buildup of scaly skin, essentially this is protein from the lymphedema that develops. Now, finally, you can get venous ulcers. So this is the last stage when the skin actually splits, cracks, and opens up. This is basically an emergency, you know, even though I know a lot of patients live with this for a long time and just get used to it. If this gets infected, it can cause cellulitis, get into the hospital and give you major health issues. I've had patients pass away from a venous ulcer that's gotten infected because they just kind of didn't take care of it in time. You know, you have to treat it like an emergency. It's almost like a race to get healed as possible. Treatment options. Let's talk about swelling, venous insufficiency, phlebolymphedema, lipodermatosclerosis, and lymphedema, and how they tie into spider veins, varicose veins. The treatment for swelling focuses on the underlying causes. So swelling is usually related to heart disease, body weight, kidney disease, liver dysfunction and inflammation in your body. I could talk about this in a hundred videos. In fact, I do. I go over those in details, but the most important things are lifestyle modifications. Get as healthy as possible. That's the real underlying root cause. Things like elevating your legs, compression stockings, are not as important. They help, but they never cure the root cause. So this patient lost a little bit of weight, helped their diabetes, helped their heart function, and it naturally got better. They didn't need to wear fancy contraptions every single day. Even though that stuff helps, really the root cause is getting your health in order. Curing the root cause is getting your muscle strength up, sleeping well, and gradually losing weight and cardio. So those four things, if I could put them in order, statistically these have been studied, but number one, you have to build up your strength. Number two, you have to be sure to be getting proper sleep. Number three, you want to do a little bit of cardio to get your heart function up if it's safe. And at the same time, you want to sleep and get enough sleep. So seven to nine hours can make a big difference on your heart, on your blood sugar level, on your cortisol, on your blood pressure. Those things are what's really important and proven. The next easiest thing to go from the left to the right is to get the proper orthotics. If you have the proper orthotics, it holds your foot and your ankle straight and it stops the plantar fascia, the inside of the ankle muscles, the calf muscles. They don't have to work as hard so they're not as sore and swollen. Very quickly, I'm talking within a week or two, you can get a dramatic improvement in your swelling. So everybody, wear good insoles, wear good shoes in the house and then start getting healthier, start losing weight. But on the other hand, compression therapy. I have a lot of great videos on compression socks bandages. Basically, if you come in with wounds or scaly skin, I would do something called an Una wrap. So I would apply that in the office and wrap up your leg. It moisturizes, it comforts your legs, it can comfortably be worn for numerous days until that skin heals up. Then we can get you in more of a long-term compression sock. But you don't need a doctor's prescription. You know, they're cheaper. They're mass-produced on Amazon now. That helps for venous insufficiency, phlebo lymphedema, 
lipodermatosclerosis. The big secret with compression socks are get ones that are easy to put on and low cost, like the eight to 15 millimeter range. You don't need the 30 to 40 millimeter range, even though these are more expensive and insurances cover the high ones, but not the low ones. Nobody uses them. And if you get yourself something called the stocking donner, it's so much easier to put on. So go with a low strength and use a stocking donner if you have a hard time. These are both low cost. There are more advanced compression socks. So there's pumps, there's under computer pumps that are relatively low cost that can help. For patients with more advanced swelling, these are called compression ferro wraps. These are unbelievable. They're so easy to get on. You can easily adjust the thickness, especially as your swelling comes down. If regular compression socks don't fit your leg for some reason, this is almost always the answer and they work so well. And if you want massaging, there's such cheap leg pumps now, like I'm talking like 50 bucks or so, you can wear these at a computer desk while you're working. These work unbelievably well. There's foot massagers. If you sit at a computer all day, compression massagers and foot massagers are very effective. I have a lot in the show notes. Elevating the legs isn't really practical. Even though it does get your swelling down, are you going to live the rest of your life with elevated legs? That doesn't make sense. Walking is probably more important than elevating the legs. In some cases, surgery is needed if you have deficiency, if you have severe varicose veins that are not getting better. Sometimes surgery is needed. For lymphedema, lymphedema wraps, manual compression, skin care is very important. Same thing with lipodermatosclerosis and when you start to develop skin issues. If you have swelling and skin issues, start by moisturizing and then put a sock over it and then get these ferro wraps, which I have linked down below. But essentially, if you just put these ferro wraps on over your skin, they will get yucky and you'll have to throw them out in like a week or two. But with moisturizing lotion and a sock, socks are a lot cheaper. Then you get the dressings on over them. This works unbelievably well. Exercise and physical therapy is very important to manage your lymphatic flow. Compression devices, as mentioned, are very important. Skin care and hygiene. When you develop that scaly cracked skin, you have to moisturize numerous times a day, especially if you take a bath or a shower. Make sure to moisturize. If you have spider veins and varicose veins and your swelling's coming down, you're already in great shape, that's the time to look at potential surgery. We provide this service where we can help in Michigan. Give our office a call and let us know. There are treatments for veins. There's sclerotherapy, there's light therapy, there's venous ablations, radiofrequency ablations. There's a lot of in-office procedures that can help. If you have a blood clot, that's basically going on a blood thinner to break it up. If you have a lot of blood clots, you can actually get something called the green filled filter to block it from getting into your lungs. If you have an active one, sometimes a IV medication called thrombolytic therapy might be needed to break up that clot. If you have this problem, check out our videos. I go over the all natural guides to help with your swelling, the all natural best supplements, the best exercises, the best everything. Check those out below. We have specific videos on all these topics.